Hey guys, welcome to Ringsiders. Really excited about our guest today. He's the one and only. He's Andrew Zarian. How are you doing, man? Hey, thanks for having me, man. I'm doing good. I'm doing okay. Not great. I I fractured my hip, and Ooh. I'm on uh, I'm on bed rest right now for the next like month or two. It, and you like, and you're still making the time to come on Ringsiders. I'm still that, making that, the time. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm honored. <laughs> Yeah, yeah no, no man I'm, I'm excited to be here this is uh trust me this is a lot easier than having to walk to manhattan you know i, I take the train into work so normally it's Ooh. like i'm doing like four <laughs> miles a day of walking and oh, wow. there's no way i could do that right now so this is this is easy breezy i'm looking forward to it how long have you lived in new york for all your life or i am a whole life yeah 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 raised nice that's uh it's a much I've I mean, been to, we've been to new you've been to new york as well haven't you jamie I have a long, long time ago, but yes. I One have. hell of a city, New York. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I can tell by the accents, you guys are also from New York, right? Oh, of course, oh, yeah, well, Boston. Yeah. 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 Boston, yeah. Yeah, I'm from Boston. That, that oh, tri-state yeah. area, the yeah. Tri-state area. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, you think you're staying easy breezy, man, but there's, there's nothing easy to talk about when it comes to wrestling, really, is there, as well, let's be honest. So, let's, it's, uh, yeah, it's... I mean... It's a, it's a fun subject, shall we say? Hey, let's <laughs> let's just start off with Andrew. Did you get a chance to see Forbidden Door? I did. Uh, absolutely loved it. Uh, great show. Uh, great wrestling show. I would say yeah, yeah. they they did a good job with what they had. Especially, uh, I know a lot of people went into this thinking they're going to get all those fantasy matches of you know. Uh, obviously, we all know Kenny Omega was a big part of this, right? So that yeah. was always the idea. I always compare this to that Rob Van Dam moment from One Night Stand, where he put this whole concept together, got it approved, and he couldn't be on the show. Yeah, It was almost like that for Kenny, but also everybody else got hurt. So it was... Uh, they did great. They did fantastic what they had. I I almost yeah, feel I, like I, there I, was... I, I, I feel like there was a, a sacrifice that had to be paid to open the Forbidden Door, and, and that was sacrifice <laughs> was like 10 injuries. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole industry. The whole industry. The whole industry, so, yeah. Not just one company. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Did I read as well? Is uh, Adam Cole now injured as well? Yeah. Yeah, he's concussed. Yeah, he got a concussion in that match, um, which kind of makes sense, right? Everybody was uh, really, they didn't understand what happened at the end. Uh, it was a really weird finish, but now we know he got he got concussed some, at some point in the match. But what was wild to me is that he got concussed early on and he went mm. through that whole thing. Like, yeah. th like that spot that they did with, um, with Hangman where he did the backflip off the top rope and he got super kicked in the face. That takes so much great precision and timing. And, right. and imagine this guy had a concussion when he did that. It says a lot about him. Absolutely. And it says a lot about uh, like Jay White, for example, knowing to finish the match. As yeah. soon as he saw that had happened, he, he knew. He went for the cover. I think he knew that was going to be it as well. Um, I think it. a lot of people felt deflated that it ended on a drop kick. But two things. It was a drop kick from Okada. And secondly, you know, it, it had to end at that point. So yeah. it, 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 it might have caught people off guard, but I actually thought it was quite an exciting finish given that I didn't see it coming. I, you know, do, you, uh, do you not do you guys not like it when it's a when it's a finish of not the finisher like it's just like a random move to finish you other than it. a schoolboy, right? Like, love I, it. I love it, too. I absolutely love it because like I, I forgot what I was watching. I watched some random match from a couple of years ago and the match ended with a random DDT. And I'm yeah, like, brilliant. you know, brilliant. They put over the move, right? Because that's a finisher, technically. And right. nobody saw it coming. We, yeah. we need, we need this, more of that. This, yeah. this, is what, this is one of my gripes as well. Just, just mention the DDT. You know, 30 years ago, Jake Roberts hit that DDT. That was it, match over. Now it's just a random move in a match. It's one of my, one of my gripes at the moment in the business is things like that. And like this, too many super kicks and the DDT is used for... A random move now is, is that something is that how you feel as well yeah it, a little bit right like to think about it this way like Shawn michaels revolutionized that super kick as a finish yeah. right like that was the first one to really make it mainstream as a finish but do you know what his finisher before that was supposed to be teardrop it, suplex uh, or something. what was that hold on what was, was it, that was it the hold on i think he got it the well, teardrop you... suplex yes it was supposed to be a suplex oh, really? yeah yeah and um I think in the video games, like at that time when he went, he went on a singles run. That first round of video games had his finisher as a suplex. Yeah, that's right. Wow. But at that that's point, mind blowing. Can you imagine yeah. that 
in the <laughs> Undertaker match. Like, he <laughs> <laughs> just hits a suplex and everyone the loses suplex. their mind. <laughs> <laughs> or, or the the famous Austin moment, right, where he, Austin grabs his life. Forget it. It's a su- it's a suplex. It it gets reversed. It's <laughs> <laughs> crazy. <laughs> wow, I did, I did not realize. I for some reason I I seem to imagine him doing a shoulder breaker for some reason as a finish. I don't know where I'm getting that from, but still, either way, that aura suplex. The, the like, rock. There are a couple moves like that, right? Like I, I like you know, uh, I'm 38, so I grew up in that. You know, I started off in the yeah. late 80s and went into we're, that we're, whole early 90s. Yeah, we're the, we're the same age, Andrew. I'm, I'm with okay, you perfect. Yeah. So y- you'll get this, right? Like when when I would watch wrestling. There were like three moves that I absolutely love that you never see anymore. Like it, it, it does, atomic drops never happen anymore. Like a really yep. good Bret Hart atomic drop. Mm-hmm. Yep. The 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 um, I, I don't. I'm gonna I'm gonna call it the ball the ball shake on the ropes. Oh, oh yeah. I, yeah. You know he 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 falls on the ropes and then they shake the rope. Yep. That that you never see anymore. And the uh the press slam gone doesn't gone. exist. Yeah. That I now you mention it. I mean that and. You never really see a back body drop nowadays. No, like, barely. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, I think oh, I think no. someone needs to bring an atomic drop as a finisher. Yeah, yeah. It's... I, I, I'm 100 percent with that. Yeah, I was actually watching Survivor Series 1990 the other night, um, and I, you just saying that I, I, I paused it and I came back to it, and it was just at the moment I believe it was Hacksaw Jim Duggan giving Dino Bravo an atomic drop. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're like yeah. losing their minds. You know, yeah. it's like the biggest move. It's a great transition move. You, you're well, feeling yeah. it. You're done. The good thing is now, now it's been gone for so long. Like you said, no one does it anymore. You could bring it back in 2022, and everyone's going to lose their minds again because it. Yeah. What's old is new, and you, some indie wrestler needs to just start using the atomic drop, <laughs> and that's going to be the hottest move on the indies. Yeah. I guarantee it. It's a high spot now. Jim Cornette yeah. loses his mind. <laughs> oh my god! I mean, I tell, going back to Forbidden Door as well. I mean, the one thing that's excited me coming out of this was obviously. We're, we're clearly going to get Claudio Castagnoli and, and Eddie Kingston, and there's a, there's a lot of backstories that in there. I mean, I I still actually if, if if he's still all okay kayfabe or if Eddie Kingston really doesn't like him because I feel like Eddie Kingston doesn't like anybody. He doesn't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what, what would you what would your thoughts on on Claudio uh, turning up? Was it something you knew was gonna? Were you was expecting that? Yeah, you know, I think a lot of people expected it, but I, I wasn't a hundred percent on it. Uh, I thought, you know, and it was cool that like, the internet kind of created the rumor. Uh, Johnny Gargano was in play. A lot of some people thought Regal would come out of retirement to have a Man, match wow. or do something. I don't think Regal could have had the match that Claudio no. did. I thought it was a fantastic match. He looked great. That pop he got was probably the biggest reaction he's gotten in his career. Yes. Um, but you know, now the story is like, okay, where does he fit in? What does he do there? Is he there? to be a top contender or is he there to kind of train everybody and work with really good wrestlers and, and just for himself? Uh, I, I want to see what they do there, but you're absolutely right. The Eddie Kingston and Claudio feud could start yeah. this Wednesday and man, that would be a fantastic story, right? Cause they both, you know, the quote, I'm using hand quotes, right? They don't like each other, right? We don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know the, what the real story is there, but great organic story built in from months ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 It, it, their rivalry i was reading and i remember briefly when i first started watching chikara they were feuding then and their story goes back like 15 years uh, you know and that hopefully knowing AEW, they're the kind of company that will reference how long this feud's gone on for the history of the feud they won't just expect that you'll know why they're feuding they'll hopefully use that to fuel this feud and what a first feud for claudia right i mean it when what I love about Eddie Kingston is he can be a face, but still be pissed off with all the other faces as well. He doesn't like anybody, whether you're a heel or a face, he doesn't like you. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what his motives are for not liking Claudia. Yeah, I I think it'll be, you know, the. Here, here's the problem here, right? A lot of criticism on AEW because everybody's now online, especially the detractors are saying, well, you're just hiring WWE guys, something you never said you wanted to do. Um, but, you know, here's the reality. It's a small business with yeah. like 200 people that work in this industry total, right? Like I'm, I'm, I'm like a top end. Yeah. yeah. Where do you want to work? Like if you're used to making, I'm, I don't know what Claudio makes. Let's say he makes a, a half a million dollars a year. 
right? If yeah. you're going to make, if you're used to making a half a million to a million, he probably makes more than that, to be honest. He probably makes, he's probably a millionaire. Uh, but let's, let's say you're making a million dollars a year, right? You work at WWE. Mm -hmm. You're still in your 30s. You still look good. You still could go as well as you ever did. Are you going to sit down and think to yourself, you know what? Um, I shouldn't go to AEW. I don't, I don't need to make this kind of money because they don't need WWE guys. The whole industry is WWE guys. The whole industry is Ring yeah. of Honor guys. It, it just, everybody works everywhere. That, that logic bothers me. And I think a lot of it comes from the whole TNA thing that yeah, they yeah. have so many WWE guys, yeah. but it's a very different company, right? Like mm -hmm. yeah. you're not, you don't have Booker T and uh, Kevin Nash you know, in your main mm -hmm. event over there, it's not like Sting yeah. is a main event guy. You you are giving a chance to younger guys, and you are using the older guys and more established guys to create stars. Yeah. Forbidden Door created two big stars, in my opinion, on that show. Uh, who would you say it created? Uh, Shooter, for oh, sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, Shooter looked like a million million bucks, and um, oh god, his name just slipped me. Uh, 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 Cal Kyle Connors. Yeah, Kyle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Connors looked. On but like a million bucks, this kid immediately, yeah. right? They yeah. created two young up and coming stars, and that was you know that that's a great thing that they just did. Yeah, Clark looked amazing. Yeah. Considering I reckon a lot of the audience might not have been familiar with Clark, everybody remembered him afterwards, and he wasn't even meant to be in that match, and he was the one that I remembered afterwards. So yeah, you're absolutely right. It did make two stars, and that's only the first Forbidden Door. Do you, do you think that the the rumors are true that we're going to get uh, Forbidden Door in Japan. That was the original story, right? That we would get it. Uh, we would get one here and one there. I, I don't know if that's even scheduled yet, but I know that they are planning on doing another one next year here. Like this is going to be a common thing, which yeah. I, I welcome it. Right. And I think other companies should be allowed in it also. I think Impact should play a part in there. Ring of Honor now, obviously well, part oh, of yeah. AEW. Yeah. Obviously. You know, they, they have an ability to do this thing that, the whole concept of all in was and that was to create this once a year or every couple months super show but every promoter that every promotion that wants to work together now you know tony has ring of honor he has aew yeah. he's working with new japan he's working with ddt uh impact isn't you know all over this thing also so there, there is a little bit of that mega show that they could put on now it's just a matter of going through the booking issues of something yeah. like that which yeah. we saw with this I can I can only imagine. If, let's say we had like five companies involved, five promoters <laughs> backstage trying to work out whose guys go over. I I can't even imagine what that'd be like. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> well, before we move on to Forbidden Door, I did have to ask you one thing as well. What what was your thoughts on uh, Shibata and you know, getting involved? You know, he looks great, huh? Mm. Yeah, he really does. He looks really good. Now, I, I mean, I I guess he knows better than everybody else how he feels. Uh, this guy, I, I mean, didn't, it was a really dangerous couple months that that guy had. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, not just yeah. like being paralyzed or, or not, not being able to have full function. I mean, he almost died. He yeah. did. I mean, what, what was, what was a quote that his neck got severed? Yeah. From I his spine. So, yeah. His head got severed from his spine. Yes. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know exactly what happened, right? But I, I can't remember. But holy moly, the guy looks like yeah. a million bucks. He he looks good. They're not doing any headshots with him. So every now and then, have Shibata do this. It's all good. Absolutely, yeah. Just bring him out every now and then, a couple of times a year. He kicks someone in the face, and no. everyone everyone would be happy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You could exactly, you could protect him. Yeah. Exactly. Um, moving on. Obviously, we have to we have to ask you as well your thoughts on on WWE, the whole Vince thing. I mean, you. Do you, do you think Vince is going to come back? I think so. Uh, yeah. yeah, I, I not, not, and I'm not, I'm not making this into a less issue or a more of an issue. Yeah. I'm just playing it down in the middle here. Uh, I, you know, if, if he didn't use company funds, uh, if there wasn't any um, assault committed, mm -hmm. right? If this was consensual, I think he'll be back. I think he'll be, and people will forget about it. Listen, this, the news, Came out when? Like Thursday or Friday, right? Yeah. He was on, uh, Thursday. He was on SmackDown that Friday, and he got a, a huge ovation. Monday yep. comes, he gets another huge ovation. I, I don't think hit that fan base really cares about it. Uh, and, and I'm not saying that they, sh they shouldn't care, right? But yeah. uh, I, I think, you know, at the end of the day, a lot of this is uh, we have to wait and see what the investigation does. You know, if they're able to investigate and find out, like, oh, my God, you know, this is a very common thing that Vince does. And there is some corporate misdeeds that were done 
Uh, I don't, I, I think even with the corporate misdeeds and nothing illegal done, uh, I think he, he will still come back because yeah. he has so much power in that company. And the reality is, you know what, you know how this is going to play out? Unfortunately, and this is how things work. If that stock tumbles astronomically mm -hmm. while he's gone, he will come back. If yeah. the stock goes up while he is gone, he will still come back. Yeah, it all yeah. comes down to the investors and what they want. And the reality is they want to make more money. And yeah. to a lot of people outside of wrestling, this man still has the Midas touch. And he's this unbelievably respected genius in media. So there is a little bit of protection on that side for him. But this is a wacky story, really. It, 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 I'm shocked by it. I'm not shocked that this stuff happens. I'm shocked that it came out the way it did. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I honestly thought that if Vince had done anything like this, we'd have heard around heard about it a couple of years ago, perhaps. So for it to come out so randomly, that's what surprised me. But I completely agree. It's not surprising that it might have happened. Um, yeah. And I think you're absolutely right. I think either way, Vince comes back. I, I really think even if they found out something against Vince, Vince is main goal would be to come back like because yeah. he knows he'd yeah. still get that same reaction there's just no wwe without vince whether you like it or not um, whether you like it or not it's a very yeah. different company without vince um you know and, and this says a lot right the inv that board of directors that brought steph back and, and that is still the wackiest thing to me uh yeah because I, I directly spoke to wwe I, I i mean i i speak to them every week but for for about two weeks the conversation was about how terrible steph is <laughs> Yeah. And how she just could, she wasn't great at her job and she was distracted and all these, this is coming from WWE directly. It's not coming from, you know, someone that hurt something. Yeah. So that between me being told that the Wall Street Journal story, uh, or, or was it business? I think it was Wall Street Journal. Uh, that piece that came out and now all of a sudden you're bringing her back after that burial. It, it says something there and I don't want to speculate, but it looks like there's a, there's a corporate struggle happening. Yeah, there is definitely. I mean, wasn't Steph meant to be having time away from the company, having a break? And then yeah, isn't, isn't Triple, H, no, Triple H is now back as well, isn't he? He, he? It's funny. I've asked about that. I've asked like multiple times. Like, what does that mean that he's back? Or yeah. what did he mean by that? And I have not. It, it's I don't know. And normally when that's I don't know from them, that means that there's a, there's a there's something behind it and they're yeah. just not ready yeah. to tell us. Uh, I don't know. I hope Hunter's back in some better capacity because yeah. NXT needs a lot of help. That's a show yeah. I, I, I no longer could watch it. I, and it's not because of the talent. There's, there's good yeah. talent on there. The it's talent's just, good. Yeah, the talent's good. You presented I, I them in a 1993 package. Yeah, it, exactly. Yeah. The, the talent yeah. is not to blame. Like, there's so many guys there, like Tony D'Angelo, Kamala Hayes, yeah. amazing Ron guys who, Ron Breaker, they're main event guys in the future for sure. I just feel like they're being robbed a bit by having to develop an NXT 2.0 when NXT was already great. I don't want to sound like that typical Smack fan. He was like, yeah. oh, bring back black and gold, but maybe not bring yeah. back black and gold, but have a merger of black and gold and 2.0. Dude. Yeah, yeah, they could do it. The problem with black and gold was, and this is what this was always my their answer to me, right? Because they are WWE was very much aware how beloved NXT was in that time period, right? So like 2015 to 2020, right? Mm -hmm. About that time period. Yeah. yeah, it was. I mean, I would say 2016, 17, 18, 19 was like their peak. They were doing unbelievable. They realized how important that was. But their answer, whenever I bring it up, it's. Yeah, but who who's who's the John Cena that came out of there? Who's mm. the big star? Who's the Dave Bautista? Mm. Who's the who is the man that came out of there? And the reality is they didn't create that guy. No, they're all in AEW. Because they're all in <laughs> AEW now. Yeah, because <laughs> AEW took them and was like, oh yeah, these guys are big stars. We can use them. It, it it's the it became a, a workers promotion. And yeah. generally when you when you have that in their eyes, you're not getting anybody over. You're just getting the matches over. You didn't develop that one guy that would go to the main roster and become the world champion. They're absolutely mm -hmm. right in that sense. They did, yeah, yeah. but it's not but, NXT's fault. It's no. what happened on the main roster. That's the fault. Tommaso Ciampa, great example, right? Uh, yeah. He has he has a look. He has the body. He has he's good on the mic. There's no reason why this guy was pre presented in the way. Finn Balor's another great example. Samoa Joe's another great example. They've had opportunities, but the reality is, 
there is only one type of guy that they want, and they want someone that is six foot four and above, six foot yep. three and above, two hundred and sixty pounds, uh, nice tan, nice head of hair, uh, and and okay in the ring, and that's about it. That's all they want. And that yeah. NXT didn't create that, you know. Now with Braun Breaker, maybe they have a chance, but I don't know. I, th I think he's the closest. I think he's the closest thing they've got to the next megastar. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. But you know, that's a lot of it. Is that NXT's doing, or is that just the fact that he's Rick Steiner's son and Scott Steiner's oh. nephew? You yeah. know, yeah. that's a exactly. good point. I, if, if he wasn't, would we still be talking about him right now? Yeah. He's a great yeah. athlete. Great. He's a good wrestler. I actually Very really good. enjoy his matches. But would we still be talking about him if he wasn't? for his family um yeah. maybe not but i think like you said he is the guy who we might be talking about in five years time main event in wrestlemania but even now i can't there's guys in nxt 2.0 who i think they're future main eventers but i thought about that about everybody in nxt uh black and gold do you see it being any different with 2.0 when they get called up to that main roster do you think we're still going to see that same pattern of disappointing call-ups well, I, I think now we're more character based in NXT than we were uh, in ring yeah. performance. Yeah. So I don't know how that's going to look like a Tony D'Angelo. Uh, I could see him doing great on that main roster, right? A character like that. Mm. Uh, they they would love something. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I would expect what they're doing. What they're doing to LA Knight now is what I see them doing with these characters, right? Right. More yeah. character based, more just talking, less wrestling. Uh, I think Braun Breaker will be the exception, but I, I don't know, man. I, I really, I'm at a, I'm at a loss with that, with that entire thing because it reminds me of developmental. It reminds me, it's just a basic program with people that are not that great at wrestling, uh, that they're putting on TV that they shouldn't, mixed in with guys that are already established with really wacky gimmicks. So, so yeah. you just summed it up perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's, it's exactly what it was supposed to be in 2012 and 2011, 2013. They went back to exactly what NXT's point was. Well, one thing on character development, less in ring. One thing I really think is going to happen, and this might be a bit of a bold prediction, but I think we're going to go through an NXT again with the the indie names. Like like you said, NXT started off with these crazy characters in 2012, we had Bo Dallas and everyone like that. And then slowly they started signing the indie names and then it became the world's biggest super indie. And yeah. I really do think we're going to go from NXT 2.0. I think WWE will realize that you have to sign some more independent talents and that will snowball into being black and gold again, but 2.0's version. I, I do think there's going to be a time where we get the indie names back in NXT. And I think it might take a few years for them to realize, but... I think a good mix of the indie names with the up and coming names that they've made from the performance center, that's your best mix. Cause then you've got the, the veterans, the people who have done it in the business, teaching these younger guys how to do it. Uh, is that something you might see happening as well? Yeah. I, I think, you know, a lot of this is their, their, their outlook is that NIL program that they put together where they want athletes. They want, yeah. Is that know, next mega, in line? They want football players, collegiate, you know, whatever track stars, basketball yeah. players. That That's what they want. That's what they've always done. I mean, look at guys like Kevin Nash don't go to the indies, you know, and that's that's what they're seeing. That's what they want. They want guys that are big and you could stop them in the airport. You know, someone's walking down in the airport. You're going to be like, who is that guy? Yeah, um, they don't feel the same about the indie guys. But however, the indies took a big hit the last couple of years. So between AEW taking up a lot of the talent and the pandemic happening, I don't think WWE had that well on the indies to find that top tier talent that they would want, like the Adam Coles and the Young Bucks are not on the Indies anymore. So where else are you going to look now? Where's your yeah. advantage? If they have yeah. all the wrestlers, what are you going to do? Let's make them. Let's make the wrestlers. Yeah. And that, that's what they're trying to do now. I don't know. It might work. I, 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 I look like I'm a big wrestling wrestling fan. Like I'm not, I'm not a big deathmatch guy, which I, I appreciate a lot of it, but I'm not, that's not my style. Uh, I, I like wrestling. And to me, I don't think they could do that right now with what they've built, with the system that they've built. They yeah. have to start over, mm -hmm. and maybe this is the next – you're absolutely right. Maybe they do this for about two years. They establish a couple of the, those characters, and then they go back into it when a lot of those guys from AEW maybe don't want to stay there. Yeah. Yeah. That's, it's, yeah. it's interesting. As much as I don't really watch NXT now, it does interest me what they're going to do with it. And 
whether or not that's working for WWE on the AEW side of things, they don't really have an NXT, but they do have AEW Dark. Uh, have yeah. you got a chance to watch much AEW Dark? I watch some of it every now and then whenever I, you know, I'm on YouTube and I see it. Um, they, I mean, they're, they're doing that's their developmental, right? With like yeah. a couple names hmm. on there. Um, I, I thought maybe that would be the end goal for Ring of Honor and turn it into something like that to compete with NXT. Yeah. Uh, I, I and now you know we're, we're Ring of Honor actually has a pay per view next month, so um, well I don't know I, I they need some TV time for that product for sure. Yeah, yeah. I completely completely agree. Dark is one of those where there's so many good names on it, um, so many good names, so many matches. God, some of the cards have like 16 matches. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in two hours, and it's like, how do you put 16 <laughs> matches in two hours? But it is a it is if you haven't got a chance to see it yet anyone watching i would recommend seeing it just see some yeah. of the upcoming names but yeah i think like tonight you have uh tony niece and wheeler yuda in for the uh pure champion for the pure title yeah which yeah. is a yeah. great match great match absolutely. yeah that's yeah. a main event absolutely. on any indie that's a main event yeah. match on any indie absolutely yeah. and Easy. Easy. it does need some tv time though i think you're right because yeah. people always use this argument of well it could be on TV or we could put it on YouTube where potentially billions of people could see it. And it's like, yeah, yeah but they're not going to. Like, yeah. that's, that's not how the internet works. Um, you've got to make them watch it first. And I think getting on TV would add a little bit of credibility to Dark because you see sometimes somebody will squash eight jobbers in, a, in eight weeks and that will count <laughs> as eight wins on the record. And yeah, then yeah, yeah. The number one contender for the TNT Championship. It's like, <laughs> wait a minute, what happened here? Yeah, that's not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see. I see one thing. I'm going to. I'll, we can. We can finish on this. I know we're, we're coming up on time. Um, what's your thoughts, Andrew? Um, the Judgment Day have they been ruined? Ah, uh, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, I'm a big fan of spooky gimmicks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I love good wrestling, but I also love a terrible spooky gimmick. Yes. Uh, I, I think, you know, oh, they did too much too fast. Like I thought, I thought Damian Priest and Edge were a good, good team up. I uh, Rhea Ripley was always supposed to go in there. I, I thought yeah. they waited a little too long to bring her in. Uh, then they wanted them to have magic and Edge said, see you later. They don't want to be part of that weird spooky stuff. So they cut Edge. I don't know. I, I, weird it was done very strange very quickly no no thought put into it and now Rhea's done edge is now separated from uh Rhea's injured not not that she's out of there but yeah. um now edge is separated in Balor's group I don't know I did it get over with you guys I I loved it with edge loved, loved it. it with edge yeah. Yeah, yeah with edge I'm not bothered about it now Balor's in it I think Balor should have been part of it but not yeah. instead of edge I mean, clearly, I'm presuming it's building to Edge Balor at SummerSlam. Um, yeah, yeah, and then probably it'll be okay. it'll be like Spooky Edge versus Spooky Balor, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Edge is going to come out to the Brood again, isn't he? It's, yeah. it's, oh <laughs> my god! Yeah. Which is a great theme tune, by the way. I've got no issue with that bit. But best, I saw best him come team. out to the Brood theme at SummerSlam last year. I thought it was awesome. Yeah. yeah, I was like, it really got me by surprise. People loved it. Yeah, it's great. It is. But I think that's the way they're going. Edge Balor, uh, uh, so and I'm, I'm I'm happy. You know, Balor's a heel now. He's, he, let's hope they give him a chance as well, because I you hear a lot of people talk about Vince doesn't like Finn Balor. So I mean, is he a heel though? Because in WWE logic, he is. But in real life, all Balor did was beat up a guy who had been calling the fans idiots for two yeah. months. And Edge also beat people around the head with a chair. He decimated AJ Styles. All Balor did was come in and say, yeah, no more of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. <laughs> you make a good point, yeah. You make a good point. But, but yeah, I, I was enjoying it at the start. Now, yeah, I, I feel like they've ruined it. Um, Edge, for me, is a natural heel as well. I was enjoying his heel work. Yeah. Um, but clearly he's coming back as a face, which... You know, again, I, I love Edge. You know, he's, he's I'm just happy to see him back even now. Yeah. Whatever he does, I'm yeah. just happy he's back. Well, we have Edge, we have Cena back. You know, let's let's bring everybody back. It's like well, 2010 all over again. I know, yeah, I know, it's wild. <laughs> it is, <laughs> but yeah, that, that's the last thing we'll talk about then. You know, your thoughts on seeing Cena back on Raw? Uh, I think it's great. I think he's he's now he's out of that Cena sucks era where now yeah. people look at him as like, oh, great, John Cena's back. You know, it's like a little yeah. treat for them. Um, 
but it was interesting. His announcement, he didn't announce he's wrestling at Summers. He said, I'm going to wrestle. Not going to be my last one. I'm going to have a couple more matches. And then he he left. I, I All right, but who do you put him with, right? Like him and Austin Theory. Okay, cool. I, I, I think that's fine for Austin Theory. I, I think that's an easy match where nobody, you know, everybody looks good in it. And it's a yeah. good return for yeah. Cena. But like, okay, so where do you go from here? Mm. Yeah. You do yeah. Cena Edge. You go to Edge. Who does he feud with? Does he go for his yeah. 17th World Championship? Does he go for his 17th World Championship? Mm. Oh, you know, I, I saw someone speculate maybe he gets the Intercontinental Championship to become a Grand Slam. I saw that too. He would have to beat Gunther. So, oh, I'd watch that, <laughs> dude. Him and Gunther and Cena. My God, that'd, that'd be, be great. Be right? Yeah, yeah. That, that'd that's be a good match. that's a bizarre yeah. universe match. I like those bizarre matchups that you never thought yeah. you would see. Like Gunther in WWE is weird. You know, for me, I, I I know that he didn't want to come to the states, and now he's here and he's doing it. But uh, like him, I like to see him and Gunther. I like to see a lot of these combination matches. Yeah. Uh, I'm just hoping they don't do they don't do like another. Uh, you know what I want to see? I want to see Edge and Lesnar. We haven't seen that really. No, we haven't. I've done that that. Matches, yeah, I want to see that match. They have options here. They have a lot of options here to do some pretty interesting stuff. But uh, man, you know, it's just such a stale product uh, to yes, watch raw, raw. Uh, smackdown's okay smackdown's not bad but watching yeah. raw it's like okay where, where are we going here what are we doing yeah. here it's hard yeah. to watch it really it is, is. <laughs> it is. I, I i forward I, I can watch a three-hour show in about 20 minutes with, with my fast forward yeah yeah, yeah. I, I mean that's the best yeah. way to watch it i, I watched the I watched the 20 minute highlights on YouTube. It's like one video someone's made in of highlights and I still skip the highlight video. Like I skip yeah. through the highlights. I get through it in about five minutes and yeah. even then I'm bored. <laughs> but you know what it is? They, they've conditioned, they, they have conditioned the audience to watch that yeah. show and say, you know what? The odds of something happening are slim. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. okay. They told us about Cena. So we know that that's going to be the only big thing that happens on the show. John Cena. They they, yeah. they condition you to have an expectation when you watch it where, you know, like I'll give an example, Matt Riddle, Matt Riddle two weeks ago had the match of his career with Roman Reigns on a huge scale match, right? That, that is the biggest yeah. profile match that that guy has ever had. The talk up of Matt Riddle on the independence was huge. Him and NXT, what they're going to do with Matt Riddle. This guy's the future. He could do so much for us. He has that unbelievable match with Roman Reigns. And what does he do the following week? Nothing. He loses. Yeah. yeah. To Omos. Yeah, exactly. To Omos. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And what does yeah. he do this week? What does he do this week? He qualifies for the for the ladder match. Uh, for the Money in the Bank ladder match. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's too much tug and pull. Pull. You know, like yeah. if you're going with this guy, let us get behind him. Let us let us get yeah. really excited that he could become a world champion. Oh, he could easily. I I I totally totally agree. But, um, I've just got the. Of all things, three, three minute, minute warning. warning. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I, will, I will happily say, Andrew, it's been an absolute pleasure, man. We've been really yeah, involved. that flew it's by. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, uh, Tuesdays I'm off, so whenever you want me, come on. Let Hell me know. Yeah, man. That'd we'll be awesome, dude. Thank you. We'll, we'll get you back. Man. Absolutely. But for now, man, it's been an absolute pleasure, Andrew Zarian. Thank you very much, man. Thanks so much, guys. Cheers, All Andrew. Right, take care. Bye. Bye, bye.